everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Hope you're all well. Welcome everyone to my channel. I hope I didn't trigger too many people in my last video. Sometimes you do say things that uh, upset some people and uh, I did have one person who very loudly told me they were leaving and others left quietly. But that's par for the course. I mean you have people who come and go all the time so uh, subscribers change some like you someday and not everyone's gonna love you all the time so I'm not too terribly upset about that I, I think that if somebody's unhappy they should go and if they like my content then you're more than welcome to come back um, I know I don't always stick to homesteading skills. There's only so much of that that a person can do. I, my gardening is really off this year. It's having been away for 10 days, having planted my tomatoes early and they suffered. So I've had to replant my... Uh, uh, all the replants are doing well. It's just they're slow now. They're late. They've got a late start. They will pick up. I know they'll do okay, but to look at them, yeah, you should be a little further along right now than what they are, but that's, it's all good. I did stop by the garden again today, but could not stay long. Once again, we have a very hazy day. Still a lot of smoke in the air, and I feel sorry for all of you that have been putting up with this longer than I have. With me, it's only been a few days, and I've just tried to avoid being outside because I find it not comfortable. I don't have um, any serious uh, breathing issues that I know of, but I was a smoker for a long time. I've given that up a long time ago, but I was still a smoker for a long time. <clears throat> And so, yeah, I find working in the heat and in the smoke very uncomfortable. So I did tie up my cucumbers, which were doing very nicely. They're all branching out, and they were sprawled on. Fortunately, I planted them where I had a row that was not planted with tomatoes this year. I had set up the garden last year to plant 100 tomato plants, and I did that. And that is actually too many tomato plants for me. Um, so one of the rows I dedicated to uh, cucumbers because it was set up nicely fenced and uh, they're doing beautifully there. And of course I've got the ground cover cloth in that area so where they were sprawling on the ground was not harmful to them at all. Um, it c keeps them out of the mud. So I tied them up nicely and uh, also decided that my watermelon plants that I had uh, planted um, in little openings in that ground cover cloth that was never dedicated to tomatoes, um, three seeds in one little area all germinated, whereas some of them didn't germinate at all. So I wanted to transplant two of those out of there, give them all lots of room to grow, and I did that today, and I'm hoping that they will continue to grow. I'm hoping the transplant doesn't affect them and bother them, but perhaps with the thunderstorm that we're supposed to get today and lots of rain, although I did water them in good, but that might help, help them to reestablish. And yeah, I couldn't spend much time there. I checked on my tomatoes and only a couple of them had been badly eaten. And I agree with a lot of you that it's cutworm. Um, and you know, this community that we belong to, <laughs> Tony's, you know, Homestead Skills channel is wonderful that everyone comes up with their, you know, you, you present uh, an idea and uh, you maybe don't know what the solution is, and you have lots of people who do. So it's great that I had quite a number of people suggest that it was cutworm, and I had done my research as well and concluded that as well. So I do believe that that was the issue. And I think I lost two, maybe three plants, but I have still quite a 
quite a large quantity, so I'm not too concerned. And the last bunch that I bought did have two smaller plants in with the large one-foot plants that I bought, and I planted those as well. I separated those and I planted those as well. So I had 14 plants that I put in last week, and hopefully they'll all do quite nicely. So yes, I had three chores that I had intended to do, and one was baking bread, and I finally got around to doing that last night, or yesterday afternoon, and uh, completed it, and sliced it, and, and wrapped it, and froze it last night. And uh, the second one was to make biscottis, and I did that today, and most of those are for my son-in-law, although I did leave a small batch for Mark and I. Mark likes his biscottis a little more tender, so I did not dry them out as much. At least I think I didn't. <laughs> uh, biscottis is that you bake them twice and yes, they get hard. But the nice thing about that is that they last a long time because they are dried. And the third thing that I intended to do was to make some soap for my son. Now, I haven't got around to that either because I checked my own stock of olive oil. And I probably need about a liter and a half to make two batches. I was going to make two batches at once, and maybe even more than that. I haven't checked on the quantity, but I know I would want to have at least two liters set aside that I could use. And <clears throat> to my dismay, I have only three liters of oil left in my stock, and I would rather not use that. Uh, you, I can use non-extra virgin olive oil for soap. As a matter of fact, it might even be better to use non-virgin over virgin. And uh, But I do use olive oil and soap. Actually, soap is best made with a number of different oils, hard and soft. But olive oil is the most, the main ingredient that I use or should I say the largest quantity of ingredients. I have done some soap videos in the past and I have put some recipes together for those that might have been interested in it and those are recipes that work. But soap making is, it's like baking, but you're dealing with lye which is a caustic substance. So uh, yeah, a lot of care needs to be taken there. Anyway, I thought, okay, great. The other day I got my flyer in and I noticed that they had olive oil on sale for $6.99. I thought, okay, great, I'll go out and get four bottles. Well, I used to buy olive oil on sale for $4.99, so I thought, okay, that's fairly reasonable. It's not too bad considering what prices have been, so that was a not bad sale price. <laughs> I didn't look at the fine print, but I did go to the store and I was disgusted to find that the $6.99 price was for a half size. Talk about shrinkflation. I used to pay $4.99 for a liter and they wanted me to pay $6.99 for a half liter on sale. Give me a break. I am better off buying a three liter container for $29. And that's what I will do. Unfortunately, all the stores are closed today, so that's going to have to wait till tomorrow. Today is Canada Day. Yay! And uh, Mark's out fishing. I, I had to. He told me last night that he planned to go fishing with his buddy, and he was going to go to bed early because he wanted to be up at 4 in the morning. I said, okay, great. Well, I was up 4 in the morning, and he was not up. And by 4.30, <laughs> and I, well, I better wake him. I woke him up and he thanked me and I made him a quick cup of coffee and he got his little butt out the door. And he had to pick up somebody early in the morning and he would have left him hung to dry <laughs> had he not been woken up. But that's all good. And yeah, he needs something to keep him physically active and he enjoys fishing, so better than other things he could be doing. I have no issue with that. So, um, I have made my biscottis today. They're yummy. And I had a few. I have to also be careful with how many of those I eat because I'm trying to get rid of a belly and trying to cut down on sugar content in order to do that. Um, that's one thing anyway. Uh, I'd like to state that if I um, triggered some people with my 
political comments in my last video. Um, not meant to do that, but it happens. I mean, you can't make everyone happy all of the time, and uh, not every video that I make is going to be canning in the kitchen because there's only the two of us. I mean, how many... If I canned every single video, I would have so much food here that I wouldn't have any place to put it. But, I mean, we, we can do that, but not here. Uh, I don't have the storage facilities for something like that. So, I try to do canning videos, I try to do thought videos, you know, something to think about. Um, I try not to touch on politics, but occasionally I do a little bit, and if it triggers somebody, that happens. I mean, we don't all think alike. I have no issue with somebody having a different opinion to me. They have every right to. And I have every right to have my opinion. That's the way I see it. And someone wants to get upset with me, not too much I can do about it. I'm not here to, um, what's the word? Uh, what's my thought here? To reinforce somebody else's beliefs. Not here to do that at all. I'm here to perhaps state mine. And if you uh, like that and you want to stick around, awesome. If you don't, you can certainly politely tell me what you disagree with, and that's fine, and we can have a little chat about that, or I can just let it go and let you voice your opinion. I don't have an issue with that either. But, um, yeah, I I'm not confrontational, have no intention of being confrontational, and uh, if I've made you unhappy, not too much I can do about that. My... Uh, you can't make everyone happy all the time. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to have a nice relaxed day. The only other thing I can do today, I think, is to pull out all my empty jars and count them. <laughs> and I'm afraid to do that because <laughs> they are all over the place. Anyway, we will try to get back to canning videos. I've got another load of chicken stock to make up, but I think that I've done a lot of videos on making chicken stock. I have uh, noticed that some of you were pretty happy to see some uh, the video I did on some very basics for canning, and I suspect that's more some of uh, my viewers who have not done a lot of canning. And if there is something more that you feel that needs a little more in-depth information, let me know and we'll see if we can accommodate. Now I do, when I make canning videos, I do try to go through every single step in every video. Sometimes I forget the odd one, <laughs> like measuring for headspace or um, debubbling. But on the whole, I try to be thorough. You know, I think when you're, when you're canning a liquid like chicken stock, you don't need to debubble. So and when you're canning tomato sauce, you don't need to debubble. So it, you, there are certain things you absolutely do need to debubble. There are tips and tricks that perhaps I can point out, like some vegetables absolutely do need to be blanched before. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is that a lot of vegetables have a lot of air. So if you don't blanch, well, okay, blanching what it does is it removes some of the air in those vegetables. So if you were to not blanch, what would happen is your headspace would be all wrong because uh, during your canning process, the uh, vegetables heat up, they cook somewhat, and the air is released at that point, so the headspace in your jar is going to be much greater. And that's why you notice some jars with a, l a big headspace when you're done, and that could be because you raw packed. And there's nothing wrong with raw pack, but to have um, a better canned product that has a proper liquid amount, um, you do want to blanch somewhat. Okay, any other tips or tricks or uh, issues somebody might have. I had one lady who asked me, um, 
what happens if you don't acidify your tomatoes before you can them? And that's basically putting lemon juice in. And as I explained to her that uh, for most of my life we never acidified the tomatoes. My parents never did. Nobody that I knew did that. Hundreds of Italian families canned tomatoes every year and none of them acidified it. But there seems to be some new uh, recommendation that uh, tomatoes are not as acidic as they used to be, whereas they're not saying that that was bad in the past, but things have changed, and for some reason they don't believe the tomatoes are acidic as they used to be, so they uh, recommend, if you're going to water bath can tomatoes, that you acidify them. Now, I also explained to this lady that the way we used to can tomatoes as a child, the way my parents did, was that they would do a very large batch. and I mean, they'd do it all in one day. So whether it was three bushels or five bushels, you know, uh, you're talking a bushel being 50 pounds. So if you're doing five times that much, and it was a family affair, it wasn't just one individual doing that work. Personally, I don't want anyone near me when I'm doing it. Yeah, so they would have a huge batch of tomatoes that they were doing, and they would probably get either a drum or some very large container to um, water bath can them in and it would be done out in the yard with either a burner or, or under a fire pit and that thing would go for hours because it, first of all it would take quite a while to get that thing up to temperature and secondly they just let it go for hours so that was not a 10, 20, 30 minute whatever water bath that is the current recommendation. And it would usually be emptied the next morning after everything had cooled down. So it's it was done in a different manner and uh, it always worked. Now the thing with I don't really know anyone that has ever gotten botulism from uh, canning tomatoes ever. Um, but the other thing to understand about botulism is that with, with tomatoes specifically, making a tomato sauce, which is what it was most commonly used for, is that the tomato sauce was also cooked for an hour, two hours. Today I don't cook it that long. But anything more than 10 minutes over 85 degrees will make it safe. So, I mean, if, if a jar goes bad, you know it goes bad. If the, if the lid pops and, and you lose the seal, that jar is bad, you throw it out. There's absolutely no doubt about that, you, you know, and you can tell. And I had to teach my mother to remove the rings <laughs> because I do remember they can explode. You leave the ring on, I've seen a tomato jar go bad and explodes and what happens is you've got not only fragments of the contents all over the place, you also have shards of glass which is pretty ugly. So yeah, I had to try to teach her. She thought the ring helped to keep it. No, I had to take the rings off. Do not leave the rings on. Not only that, you leave the rings on and it's a lot tougher to get them off later on. But anyway, I have seen other people do <laughs> things with to, to canning tomatoes that I would never do. Um, things like just canning it hot, putting the lid on, turning the jar upside down, and letting it cool like that, and that's sealed. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> No, you want to water bath can or pressure can, you want to do something. These were not canned in any respect, it's just that the contents went hot in the jar. And when it cooled, of course it does vacuum seal it, but people will do all kinds of things. The recommendation is to use an acidifier and you either choose to follow recommendations or you don't. That is really up to you. 
Okay, that, that is my pointer for the day. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills, and uh, hope to catch you on the next one. Bye for now.